Hi, I'm Pastor Ryan Wright, and it is a privilege for me tonight to be able to come and teach to you out of the book of James as we talk about practical Christianity. And uh, this is a great passage. I, I want to read the passage to you tonight. Uh, it's in James chapter 2, verses 16 through 26. As I read it, let's remember who James was. He was the half-brother of Jesus. Uh, he, he didn't really become a follower of Christ until after the resurrection. But after he did become a Christ follower, he quickly rose through the leadership ranks to become the, the pastor leader of the Jerusalem church. He was very influential. As a matter of fact, in Acts chapter 15 and verse 13, we see James stepping up and mediating a major church issue. And, and his counsel was received and followed by the apostles. So while he did not walk as one of Jesus' 12 disciples, it was obvious that he had much more time with Jesus than just three years. He grew up as Jesus' little brother, and the influence of Christ on his life had a great impact to the point that his wisdom was greatly respected by all of those in the Jerusalem church. In this passage, James takes on a, a conversational style where he both asks the questions and answers them and gives us some insight into what that looks like. What good is it, dear brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions? Can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and, and you say, goodbye and, and have a good day, stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing? What good does that do? So you see, faith by itself, it isn't enough. Unless it produces good deeds, it is dead and useless. Now someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds, I will show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scriptures say. Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to, she was shown to be right with God by her actions. And when, when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. Okay, this is me talking now and not James. It's pretty simple. He starts out by saying, faith is just a word unless it produces actions. If it doesn't produce action, it's not real faith. Here's what he said. If you say you have faith, but don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? So listen, faith and good deeds are not an either-or proposition. We must be careful not to over-spiritualize the word faith or to under-spiritualize good deeds. Jesus said in, in Matthew 7 when some guys came to him and, and, and they said to him, uh, Lord, we did all of this in your name and, and we did all of this for you. And he said, depart from me because I never knew you. It's a combination of not only what we do, but it's what we believe. And that was a really important part of what Jesus taught. He even said a little bit later on in Matthew 7, anyone who hears my words and puts them into action is like a wise man 
who builds his house on a rock. Next, we see that faith transcends intellectual belief and moves us into action on behalf of others. Verse 19 of our passage says, You say you have faith, for you believe that there is one God. Good for you! Even the demons believe this, and they tremble in terror. How foolish! Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Paul, Paul teaches us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that it is by grace that we have been saved through faith. And this is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. He even says it's not by works, so that no one can boast. But verse 10 is really important. It says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Listen, we, we are saved by grace through faith and not by works. We also see here, though, that while faith is how we are saved, we see in verse 10 that we are saved to do good works. Paul, Paul says the same thing as James. Your faith that saves you is evidenced by the good works you were destined by God to do. In Matthew 25, 31 through 46, there was a story where Jesus says, the, the judge says, welcome, come in to the kingdom. And they said, Lord, you know, why should we come in? He said, well, because when I was hungry, you fed me. Because when, when, I, was, uh, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And they said, Lord, Lord when, when did we do that to you? And Jesus said, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it as unto me. And there was a reciprocal to that because he said to some others, you depart, you workers of iniquity. And he said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. And when I was thirsty, you didn't give me something to drink. And they said, Lord, when did we not do that to you? And he says, when you didn't do it unto others, you didn't do it to me. And, and the principle that is laid out there by Jesus is that if you don't believe enough in what I'm saying to go out and to minister and do good works and good deeds to others, then that's not a kind of faith that's going to get you into eternity. Faith that inspires you to do good works is the faith that opens the doors of eternity. The ultimate test of our faith is what we do with it, or better yet, what it allows God to do with us. Think about Abraham here in verse 21. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened, just as the scriptures say. Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He, he was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. So as we look at Abraham's willingness to do what God had said was an action that proved his faith in God. Uh, favorite verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Let me just tell you that if there was any time that Abraham had to lean not on his own understanding, and trust God in the way that he lived out his life. Man, it was in that way of sacrificing his son. Abraham lived out Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 right there on the spot. And sometimes I just look at the things that caused me to stop and not want to trust God because maybe God asked me to give my last dollar or asked me to give something to somebody in need or God wants me to do something that's outside of my comfort zone. And then I compare that to Abraham. Oh my word. Am I just a puny little guy or what? My faith needs to be bolstered. Because when we trust God, man, that proves our faith. And so that's the way it was with Abraham. And God makes that point so clear in this passage. The next thing is that this action kind of faith isn't only for the religious. Anyone can have faith in God and see great things happen as a result. James talks about Rahab when he says this, Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions. And when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road, just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. I love the contrast here between Abraham, the patriarch, 
and Rahab, the prostitute. Talk about two extremes and two different kinds of people. James says, faith is for everyone, and it's for all of us. It don't have to be a pastor or somebody that everybody else knows about. You just need to be you. And where God finds you, whether it be in Jericho and, and you're in a place of great war, or you be out in the wilderness and God asks you to sacrifice your son, God says, have faith in me. Trust me. You will prove your faith by your actions and placing your trust in what God tells you to do. I hope that as you study today, tonight, as you have your questions, that your faith will grow, that each one of us that have been given a measure of faith, God says that he's given that to all of us, that that measure of faith will grow in us. And it won't simply because we be because we had a good discussion with each other, but it'll be because we leave our homes tonight, and as we walk out into our community, we start seeing opportunities to do good deeds in the name of Jesus, and that the world would see our good deeds and that God would be glorified because his people put their faith, real faith, in him. God bless. Have a great discussion. Thank you.